Thanks, Julie. Coach, always excited to talk to you about this defense. And I know it wasn't the performance you wanted yesterday or on Sunday, but there were some exciting performances, yes. specifically by a guy, Jeremy Reeves. He did an excellent job. You know, special teams Pro Bowl guy, but played well in the context of the defense. And here are some plays I thought he just did an excellent job of. Coach, this is this uh, this is the first play, not the first play, but it's a, a keeper action here coming across. And I think he just does an excellent job after he rotates deep to come back and match this concept. So let's just take this play out real quick. Again, gets back in that rotation, understands what's going on. You get a nice job by Montez Sweat here, forcing the throw. And then you get a nice job by Jeremy matching the crosser in this kind of zone Y match concept and making an excellent pass breakup. Absolutely. And, and, and basically, the biggest thing more than anything else is with the crosser, okay, <clears throat> what Jeremy does, again, is with his eyes and vision into the quarterback, mm -hmm. he knows he has now has the crosser. So he's mm -hmm. going to drive down to pick this man up. Okay, because again of the pass rush and the press, yeah. the pressure, the timing is thrown off a little bit. Because again, if you look at it, he out leverages the linebacker, yep. and because he's gotten past the linebacker now, that receiver is technically open. But again, the pass rush, what we've gotten from the pass rush, has given us a lot of opportunities to make plays like this. Yep. This is a heck of a play by Jeremy coming down to make it. Yeah, and you know this is something that I wasn't expecting from him, coach. You know, I always see him as like this physical mm -hmm. tackler, but. He had a couple nice PBUs or almost PBUs yes. in this game, and I thought this was a perfect example of that, getting his hand in there, no PI, great job by him. And the other thing we just talked about, he did an excellent job against the run, Coach. Here he is, setting the edge, and you guys, you know, this Kyle Shanahan offense, they want to run mm -hmm. laterally to get downhill, but if you can't run laterally, there's nowhere to stretch the defense yes. and everyone stays home. He does an excellent job of this, just setting a nice vertical edge and forcing the ball back, you know, chinning George Kittle forcing the ball back into the teeth of this defense. And that's exactly what you have to do, especially as the guy that's got force. And what mm. you really love on this more so than anything else is the way he and he and Chase are working yes. in tandem. He's getting upfield on, on, on Kittle. Okay, and then again, you see Chase get his yep. push right. on his man, yep. and now all of a sudden there is no place to go. He's got to cut back, and he's cutting back into the teeth of the defense. Youth defense, and again, Payne here does an excellent job with his hands, shedding a pretty good guard there, a young player, makes a nice tackle. You love to see that kind of physicality, yes. coach, and guys just making plays, working together, really. Yes. Here's another one. I, I, he's coming from depth, Reeves, and I just love – I love his just intent and his willingness to get to the football. You see that special teams mentality right here. Yes. He comes up, makes a nice fit on this gap scheme run here. Says, what's up, McCaffrey? Get out of here. Yes. Shoulder to the face mask. Like that mentality, but there's a lot of other good stuff going on here as well. Absolutely, because if you get a chance to watch this, watch the way it's read by the linebackers. The linebackers are all reading their keys. Yep. You know, both Jamin and Mayo get to the get to the spots they need to because Mayo's downhill. That ball's now going to try and bounce all the way outside. Yeah. Ideally, sometimes on these plays, they want to try and crease you inside. Yep. Okay, but because Mayo gets downhill, because Jonathan does his job, yep. okay, now that ball's got to bounce. Now it's going sideways as opposed to downhill. We got a really good setup right here on the outside. We got Jamin there for force. We got uh, support behind by St. Juice. And of yep. course, now Jeremy fitting from depth inside makes the tackle yeah. with Jamin. And it's cool because Jeremy gets the credit for that tackle, but everybody's doing their job. And I love watching yes. good run fits like that, Coach, because it's a physical mindset and it shows they're well coached. Well, the beauty of this particular play, too, if you look at it, Take away the far corner. Yep. We've got 10 guys in the string. 10 guys in the shot. That right. means defense is making their reads. Defense is playing down. And these guys played very well, especially in this game, because if you look at it, one of the things that they did, we held San Francisco one for five in the red zone. Yeah. That showed you these guys were playing pretty good football. If we could have made a couple things happen, I think we'd, we'd, we had a chance. Yeah, got to get support from the offense, yes. definitely, Coach. Another good play here from from Jeremy is just, again, it's really hard to tackle this this young man, as you know, it's really hard to tackle him in space. And I think Jeremy does an excellent job, again, coming from depth here to yes. make this play. Well, first and foremost, again, you got to give credit to Bobby. Bobby McCain gets downhill, mm -hmm. okay? He forces it back inside again to where the teeth is. Now here comes here comes the rest of it. David Mayo is coming in, in to fit in. He's going to force it back inside as well. I mean, outside to his leverage yeah. tackler. And that's what happens when Jeremy comes in and gets in and makes the play. Yeah, you just love to see a young guy getting his opportunity, getting the Pro Bowl, getting all this stuff, and just making plays when he had to make them and fitting in this defense, which actually did, like you said, a pretty solid job despite the score. Coach, can't wait to see more plays like this coming up this weekend. Appreciate it. Coach, got the Cleveland Browns coming up this week. Kind of a must-win, kind of a playoff atmosphere type game versus a team that's kind of having some of their own struggles but also playing well in some certain areas, specifically at the quarterback position. Lots of stories around that. Him as a player and him as a person, but I think him as a player, he's starting to improve in that area. What do you think? Well, I think he's getting his feet back under him. Again, this yeah. is a guy, and let's don't forget, he's missed almost two full seasons of football. Yeah, that's right. So now he's back in it. He's getting his groove a little bit. I also think they're trying to figure out and understand how they can use him as their quarterback. I see. What mm -hmm. offenses fit him, what schemes. 
uh, as far as the run game, as far as the passing game, uh, and with his athletic ability as a runner, yeah. do you now start to incorporate the RPOs and the, uh, and, and the zone reads? Yeah, which is traditionally not something Stefanski's been, like that's not been a big part of what he does, right? Correct. But in addition to all the quarterback design run stuff, he does, you know, I played with him when I was in Houston. He does have this kind of knack for creating off schedule. And this play is a screen play that the Bengals do a great job of sniffing out and he is able to kind of elevate this play and make an explosive out of it. He does. He, he's great with his improvisation. And again, this is one of those things that a young man with his athletic ability, what's the best way to use the guy? Yeah. So here's a great example of, again, why an RPO system would suit the young man. Yeah, because yeah. again, just the whole fact that he has the read pass option and off of the pass option, he has the ability to run the ball as well. So yeah. that's really what you're getting here. Yeah. You're getting a screen. He knows he can go to the screen. Now all of a sudden, it's red, yeah. so I, I can't dump the ball, so I'm going to improvise. And yeah. Again, he improvises and makes something happen. And this is one thing you got to give them credit. Their offensive linemen are disciplined enough to understand that you don't go downfield until the ball is released. And yeah. that's how you make a big play. That's how you make a big play. And I think it's interesting you mentioned the RPO stuff, especially with all the models out there right now with the Philadelphias of the world. Like They have a template for how they could use this skill yes. set. Yeah. Very much so. And I think that's one of the things that – as, as he goes further and further, we have to be aware of, even right. though it's not being a big part of what they've done, they've done a little bit of it, they can do more. Yeah, I was going to say, because he is, like you said, I think that's a really fantastic point. He is growing. So how is the offense going to grow as he grows? That's a great point. Obviously, defensively, they're having a hard time. They kind of have a lot yeah. of mistakes. You know, here's a third and short situation where they're matching up with man-to-man -man coverage. They seem to be pretty consistent with this coach. It seems like a good spot to take a shot. But anytime you're taking a shot, you've got to negotiate number 95, who's you know, yeah. one of the best defensive ends in the NFL. Yes, and one of the things that, again, you've just got to understand is that wherever he's aligned, who has him is responsible for yeah. him. Predominantly, he's on the offensive left. Mm. Okay, When the ball snapped on this, he's wider than normal. Tight yeah. end forces him out there, which, again, you'd like to think that the, the tackle has a little bit more time. But because what they're doing is, Again, they are pressure rushing oh, I see. The, the linebacker. So look at him. He's focused in on the linebacker just in case he's the blitzer. Right. And ideally, you let the widest guy go. Uh, but that's Miles Garrett in this case, which, exactly. isn't, a good, which so, isn't a good deal, right? So again, they do some things that kind of mix you up, and this was one of them. Yeah, and I, I, that's a great point by there. Like kind of that green dog pressure yep. there yep. makes it really challenging. But, you know, I think on the outside, you know, you guys – this matchup favors you. You have great skill yes. position players. They got good corners, but I think the, the yeah. playmaker's better. Well, I think 21 Ward's is a heck of a football yeah. player for them. And again, if you if you are going to throw the ball, typically when you're throwing a nine route, you, you're throwing the one on one. You want to take the matchup you feel is best. Down here, they believe this is their best yeah. matchup, and so this is where Pickett's throwing the ball. And this guy's got a step. Probably shouldn't make this play. And I think yeah. Terry probably does make that. Play. I'd like to believe Terry. <laughs> I'd like to believe um, any all of them, right? Yeah, yeah, Terry, Jahan, Curtis, they all can make that play. But again. They give you these opportunities, you got to capitalize, but you got to make sure it's protected. And they do yeah. have some guys with some juice up front. Yeah, and again, this is one of the things you'd like to see is you'd like to see that left tackle. Okay, if he's got 50. Uh -huh. If they all came, he's got 50. Right. Right. Then 50's his guy. He's got to kick back. Right. He's got to get himself going. He has got to get himself back. And then once he realizes 50 is no longer in, not really in the rush, yeah. now he's in position to try and stop Miles Garrett. And also the back here, you know, like, because it's protections, a, it's a team thing. You yep. like the back there to help him out a little bit more, maybe change his alignment, force him into the tackle. Absolutely, coach. The other thing, you, you already mentioned this because you're so on it, is he does do a lot of stuff running the football. Now they've kind of shifted their running yeah. attack to suit this. Just why is this challenging? When I look at this, I'm saying, man, this tight end has an excellent landmark to the linebacker to wall him out. The guard has an excellent kickout block here. It seems like this run really favors, just from alignment, what Cleveland wants to do. Exactly. And the other element, is we mentioned earlier, now is the RPO. Yeah. Truthfully, on this play, yeah. he should be throwing the dart. Okay. At the top, yep. the X receiver should be coming down right inside right now and again. That, they haven't put that in yet. Yeah. But again, it's there, yeah. Because it is there. Because watch how he jogs off the line, but look at the separation between him and the corner. Yep. And see, he's just jogging off. Yep. So this could be a prelude yeah, to the to next phase. The RPO, which right. is the next phase. Again, this is a pin pull scheme. They're blocking down, pulling some guys up and around. And like you said, they create some positive angles. Um, typically, they used to run this out of the dot. Right. Now, all of a sudden, because this quarterback is here, because these are the skill set this quarterback has, this could be a part of what they do. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the out of the dot because I think, you know, Nick Chubb, yep. to, for my money, is probably the best back in the NFL. He's less effective from the from the sidecar. 
Yeah. Does that go into game planning at all, or you say, thank goodness they're in the sidecar here? And they're well, in you do say, thank goodness they're in the sidecar, but, and again, I know this is Brissette that's yeah. out there, and, and when you got Deshaun out there, again, what you're going to get, you'll probably get a little bit more RPOs, yeah. because once he's in there, and once he becomes, I think, established as their true QB, which he yeah, is, right. these, these plays will now have another element, which right. will make them even more del- right. uh, uh, dangerous. You're going to have the RPO element, you're going to have the zone read element, yeah. Now you've got to defend the whole thing, right. which will change people's approach to them. And as you said earlier during our conversation, um, there's a couple of pretty good models out there, <laughs> yes. i.e. Philadelphia, yeah. with what they're doing. Right, absolutely, yeah. So, again, you got to kind of plan for what is coming, what could happen, and also what they got right here at number 24. Exactly. And, again, going back to what they could do, because if you look at this play in particular, if they're running some sort of dart or bang eight, yeah. look at the safety moving. Yeah. Okay. He's moving, and if you're running, if you're running that slant or that dart, yeah. and you hit that, he fits in behind that safety. There's a big space. All in the he has to do is here. beat the corner. He's got yeah. a long way to go. So yeah. again, that's going to be an element we're all going to have to contend with once they get settled exactly how they want to play uh, Deshaun Watson. Yeah, coach. I mean, that's that's you playing chess and everybody else playing checkers. Because I didn't even think of that. I thought, oh, you know, this is the run they're going to run. But the idea that they can grow and develop around Deshaun and his skill set is always a really fascinating conversation. Coach, thank you so much for having me. I learned so much every time we talk. Really appreciate it. All right.